can see this right so we want to know was this right no let's just call this c okay and we want to find what is the output noise here right so there is noise from the diode also which is a current noise which is here right correct so it will not appear to the output because of this voltage source right so the voltage no a source will basically short this current to ground right so when we are considering noise we are only worried about the ac behavior okay not the dc behavior right so then all of this goes away and what you get is just a short then right so you can simply rewrite this so no need to write it down so um this is v out and uh, this is 2c right and which element contributes noise a uh, 2c because these two capacitors are in parallel so this resistor contributes some noise right and what is that noise 4 ktr right so again did you okay fine so this noise is 4 ktr or it could be a voltage also yeah it doesn't matter really so either way it's fine um let's look at just a voltage source so either way it's fine you multiply it with the impedance here you take the ratios right now this looks like a voltage noise vn squared in series with the resistor and a capacitor with value 2c right and here you have we are okay fine not fine so what is v out in terms of spot noise which is vn it is 1 by j omega times dc divided by r plus 1 by 2j omega c correct so v out we do vn times 1 by 1 plus 2j omega c r is that fine and yeah, this is spot noise right uh, noise at some specific voltage uh, now what we are interested this looks like the transfer function h of j omega or h of 2 pi r right now if you want to find sn of v out right of f will be this one right which is 4 kt r right divided by 1 plus 2 modulus of this square right is that okay now what will this be 4 kt r uh let me get this 4 let me just say 2c is c1 or something right just to simplify this thing so it will be 2 pi f r c square is that right yeah so now how do you get the total noise integrated from 0 to infinity so one thing to note is here we are looking at single sided power spectral density okay this is from 0 to infinity right and this value will be 4 k t this is the i mean this is the density so to get the total noise you just integrate this from 0 to infinity right is it okay and this will be 4 k t r 
now i can call it 2 pi f r c f x right 2 pi r c d f will be d x correct just a variable change right so then this will be 4 k t huh? oh square here sorry sorry yeah. so this will be 4 k t r integrated from 0 to infinity so d f will be 2 pi r c right d x 1 plus x square right if you put 0 and infinity for f you get 0 and infinity does not change right. So, if you have come up to this level it is good enough ok, but uh, then this integral turns out to be tan inverse of x right. So, when you substitute 0 and infinity you get pi by 2 minus 0 right and you substitute pi this is c1 this is c1 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 what will this be 4 k p r by 2 pi r c1 times pi by 2 right this integral now this pi pi 2 2 everything cancel right r r cancel this will be k p by c1 right uh, is that fine so what is c1 2 c which is 10 picofarad right so when you substitute the values 1.38 10 to the negative 23 times 298 let's just call this 300 or something okay for simplicity divided by c1 is 10 to the negative 11 okay is it fine not fine yeah so what will this value be i mean this will be 10 to the negative 12 times uh, approximately 400 right yeah like this times that it's approximately that so that is 4 into 10 to the negative 10 this is v m out square total Right. This is the total power of noise. This is the variance. Right. Now, what will be V n at the output? Sigma will be square root of that, which is two into ten to the negative five volts, approximately twenty microvolts. Right. That is the noise at the output. That's the RMS now. So take the square root of the mean of the squares, sum of the squares. Right? Is that fine? Yes. Okay. Good. So let's uh, review what we did last time. Okay. So anyway, so let's uh, spend like the next five ten minutes uh, reviewing what we did last class. Right? So I think the content there is quite important. You will. Uh, I use it quite quite a lot in IC design, right? So we kind of uh, spent quite some time saying that the Gaussian noise and white noise are not the same, right? So any correlation between samples in time or non-correlatedness means that it will turn out to be what white in frequency domain, right? and uh, the amplitude variation will be Gaussian all right. Now if you take this white noise and then send it through an LTI system which could be an amplifier or it could be a, a low noise amplifier LNA or whatever right. Uh, the output also will be a Gaussian distributed variable but the frequency response will be filtered by the LTI system ok is that ok all right. So, anyway so then uh, we then went on to say how the mean will be it is basically the DC gain of the LTI system times the mean of the input variable right and then uh, we did all the math uh, I suggest you review this again 
and uh, what we concluded was that uh, the the cross correlation function of the output will be the input convolved with the impulse response of the LTS system and also the mirror image of that right that is what this equation means correct is that fine all right. So, then uh, the power spectral density at the output will be shaped by the transfer function of the LTI system right. So, if this S of f that is of the input if it is white then the output will be colored if there is a frequency dependence as a transfer function which in most case is a frequency dependent uh, parameter is that ok all right. So, then we took a simple graphical example said that if this uh, input had a white frequency spectrum then the output will and if the transfer function has a filtering characteristic then um, the transfer function of the output or the noise spectral power spectral density of the output will be shaped like this right ok. And uh, now, uh, an intuitive way to look at PSD is to kind of say that uh, I have a filter which is of a bandwidth 1 hertz and then I move the center frequency of that filter and measure the power that is dissipated in a 1 hertz, 1 ohm resistor right and then plot it across the center frequency and that happens to be the power spectral density. This is an intuitive way but uh, um, which is also another way to look at. So, then we did look at uh, uh, MATLAB simulation I mean if you remember from the previous class we said we did look at how the distribution looks if that was getting filled if the Gaussian noise was getting filtered through a simple uh, you know moving average filter ok. And then uh, I did mention about um, the power spectral densities here one thing to note is this is single sided power spectral density. That means that when you integrate the to get the total power, you go from zero to positive frequencies, right? Um, and then uh, this happens to be four kVT. I think we also looked at in the example. And then uh, I just brought up this Nyquist formula, which says the total noise um, for a passive network can be obtained by just looking at uh, the in real part of the input impedance and multiplying it by 4 KTR and integrating it to whatever frequencies of interest all right good. And then um, there was a mistake I made in the previous class when I was describing short noise right. So, how many of you got a chance to look at the video lecture I shared of uh, Ali Ajimiri Professor Ali Ajimiri uh, ok only one of you ok. So, uh, if you go to Moodle right I uh, suggest uh, the following. So, let me just uh, so if you go to this uh, Moodle website right um, there are these announcements and you can see some of the announcements that uh, go out yeah. So, here I shared a video uh, this is by Professor Ali Ajimeri where he uh, very nicely explains the you know the origin of short noise right. Uh, so, the basic idea there is the discrete movement of charges from one terminal to the other right. On the contrary we will come to that uh, maybe I will briefly explain it later. Um, so, there was a correction for the description of short noise uh, we will touch upon that now. And then uh, there is also noise from the uh, transistor right which can be modeled as a thermal noise component and a flicker noise component right and these are the two different components right and uh, this uh, particular uh, thermal noise component has this parameter gamma right which for a long channel transistor is about 2 and uh, 2 thirds ok. Now, this again this function uh, depends on really which mode of operation the transistor is operating at. So, if it happens to be a linear mode of operation then uh, this will be the gate to GD of the transistor drain to source conductance 
and then the flicker noise component. So, I think somebody asked you asked a question on uh, you know uh, modeling of flicker noise right. So, again in Moodle I have shared some references uh, here right. Uh, you can take a look of uh, some of the some very well cited papers on uh, modeling of flicker noise. So, if you are interested in how it uh, changes uh, with operating point right uh, you can take a look at this. Okay. What else? So, and also we said that uh, the corner frequency that is where the power of of the power spectral density of or rather the power of the flicker noise is same as that of the thermal noise that is the corner frequency and it has a inverse dependence on the squared of the length. So, if you want to move the transistor uh, cor flicker noise corner lower you can increase the increase the length of the transistor right. So, this is an important problem why uh, because this flicker noise corner is round about um, you know in tens of kilohertz to uh, you know little less than uh, 500 or 1 megahertz right. Now, this particular um, uh, thing is important to note because most sensors right are giving you signals which are small in lower frequencies right. You do not usually very rarely you have chemical and biological sensors which are giving signals in tens of megahertz right. We do not really care right. If, if my body is uh, releasing a chemical or something within let us say uh, within a matter of hours right. I do not need to measure it uh, with the resolution of a few microseconds or less than a few microseconds. So, it does not make any sense right. So, therefore, uh, the kind of signals we are looking at for most bio and chemical kind of sensors or even in fact even gyroscopes for that matter are in the hundreds of kilohertz or less. So, that is where flicker noise becomes important right particularly for sensors and uh, RF people do not really talk about it much. Okay, but for them uh, there is up conversion of flicker noise uh, which is a problem right. Uh, if you take the class RFICs uh, you will probably get introduced to that. Hmm? Um, okay. Then we kind of very uh, briefly argued why you know uh, the lower limit for flicker noise integration does not play significant role right. If you change your limits of integration from 1 hertz to even 1 day, uh, you only lose um, or you, you only lose about 30 percent uh, for such a big change in the amount of integration right. And again that entirely depends on your application. So, if you are using a sensor which is only measuring something for let us say 5 minutes, you do not really integrate it for few days. So, I think uh, this today's question was basically the last uh, part of the uh, previous lecture right. So, this formula is what you had to use for today's question all right. So, and then you said C of the time ok all right and then we did look at a map character. So, there was this question on flicker noise um, versus short noise right. So, the the argument here is the following right that uh, it is uh, it is kt by c minus 1 exactly. So, if you look at uh, what we derived here the final noise formula right. So, this is V n total square right. Uh, if you notice the total noise that you are measuring at the output right uh, of the circuit here is independent of the noise that is generated by the resistor ok. Now, if you double the resistor what will happen? 
Yeah, so if you double the resistor, the noise from the resistor will increase, right? But if you look at the transfer function here, this transfer function, right? Where is the pole? 1 over RC1, right? 2 RC, which is RC1, right? So if the resistor doubles, the corner frequency comes low when you integrate the whole thing right it really doesn't matter the noise will has increased but your integration um, uh, is still the same but the because the corner frequency has shifted right the contribution from uh, another way i mean you'll probably see this often um, is the following so if you plot the output noise spectral density right it looks like this, right, versus this, and this frequency is 1 over 2 RC1, this frequency is 1 over RC, RC1, okay. So, when you compute the integral of all this, right, the area under this will not change. Okay, so the integrated noise is independent of the resistor. All right. So the number, yes. Oh, sorry, uh, this is wrong. Okay, is that fine? So one thing to note is that this uh, area is the same in both cases. Now the number that I gave you, uh, one p, uh, what was it, ten picofarad, is uh, round about the upper limit of what capacitance you can realize on a chip, right? So uh, you cannot then say that I want an integrated noise which is uh, ten uh, nanovolt, right? What the answer we got here is round about forty micro, twenty microvolt, right? So, if you have to, you know, uh, make this 2 microvolt, right, what will be the increase in the capacitance? 100 times, right, because if this becomes 2 microvolt, then this will become 4 into 10 to the negative 12, right, this value here, okay. Now that means that the C has to go up by 100x, which is 1 nanofarad. So making 1 nanofarad capacitance on a chip is very difficult. Why? A lot of exactly. So on a chip, if you want to make such a big capacitor, right, it will take a lot of area. Usually, a uh, MIM. Uh, a MIM capacitor gives you around 10 micro uh, femtofarad per micron square. This is the rough number. So you can estimate uh, or something smaller, right? So Miraj is my number approximately, right? If you have a. Um, so take a look at some, uh, you know, uh, PDKs and you can see how much capacitance per unit area you get for a MIM capacitor, right? And the MIM capacitor is metal insulator metal uh, capacitor, which is usually realized on the top near to the top layers of the CMOS uh, process. And uh, the capacitance density is, uh, you know, uh, about round about these values, right? Five to ten femtofarad per micron square. Now, if you now do the math that is needed to realize one nanofarad, right? And the area will be huge, and Consequently, the cost of the chip will be huge and uh, you will not have a customer okay, to buy it just because you, you use the CMOS process to realize a capacity. Okay, is that fine? All right. So, um, okay. All right. So, I think uh, this topic of short noise versus flicker noise. I, so the idea here is, let's say uh, electrons are kind of discrete charged particles, right? Could be modeled that way. And uh, now, if you have a p-n junction, 
which is P and N and if there is current flowing between the two right uh, some DC current actually what is happening is these electrons are making a transition across this junction right discreetly. Now, if you have an infinite resolution oscilloscope that could measure this current uh, sorry this is with time and if this was measuring the current then what you will see is the charges are going in discrete steps right. So, there is a quick current that is caused by a flow of charge and then this happens in finite uh, you know intervals right. So, there is a transition of one charge across the junction is that fine yes. Uh, so, um, if you monitor the current through a junction right you can model it as a discrete charge that is transitioning from uh, the P to the N right. So, you cannot have uh, the argument here is you cannot have uh, half an electron to travel the junction. So, these are discrete like particles which are flowing right. So, you can then say that if I monitor the current with highest resolution possible. So, these are average uh, or rather charges let us call it charges that are flowing right through this these are happening in pulses right. And now, because the charge is so small hmm, and that uh, what we are measuring is a, a filtered version of this current with uh, with a current meter for example and this current is noisy right and this noise is arising from the discrete flow of charges ok is that fine. So, the other thing is that if let us say uh, I now have no current right. So, then what is the noise in the charge 0 right. So, if you have no current flowing there is no discrete flow of charge and there is no variation of that also right. On the contrary if the current increases then the number of charges that are flowing are also many in number and the discreteness and the randomness increases right. So, therefore, when you get the spectral noise density is proportional to the DC current right. So, higher the DC current the more discrete the charges uh, will be more number of discrete charges will be flowing through the junction and uh, therefore, consequently the spectral density is proportional to the DC current yes. That is the bandwidth exactly yes correct. So, that is what we say that uh, uh, this is power spectral density right. So, depending upon the bandwidth of the instrument you get a different amount of total integrated noise ok. And then if the charge value itself is now 10 to the negative 19 right. Now, instead of 10 to the negative 19 if it was any different right then the noise would have be or any higher then the noise would kind of increase right because the amount of charge that is flowing has gone up right. So, therefore, it is proportional to Q and uh, there is a derivation to this, but essentially this is the short noise formula ok. This is the single sided power spectral density is that ok all right. So, I think the flicker noise I, I probably explained it also last time is that uh, in a pitch in a in a in a in a, in a in a transistor right which has this P substrate and uh, source and green right. This is an os insulator an oxide right and uh, these are dangling bonds because the silicon there does not have you know all the uh, valency um, all the bonds with the adjacent silicons like the ones here right these atoms are different from the ones next close to the surface. So, they have charge traps and uh, they actually um, 
have like uh, uh, you know these electrons get stuck in those traps and they get released randomly okay and that's what that's what leads to the flicker noise hmm? but anyway i think if you are interested you know i can provide pointers on this topic of modeling of noise right and uh, that for a circuit designer you know is an interesting problem but not the only problem okay all right so we'll take one simple um, example now this is again uh, to illustrate how to use noise uh, in our analysis okay so let's say we want to design a simple temperature sensor that looks like this so we take a, a proportional to uh, ptc basically what it means is that this resistor changes with uh, temperature much more than as normal resistor let's call this a bias resistor and bias is just one volt right so let's say this um, will be some rs some r0 one plus p ambient minus 25 degree c times alpha s right and r d will be the same value one plus p ambient minus 25 degree c Times alpha b, right? I monitor this voltage. So basically, the idea is alpha s. If it is much greater than alpha b, then if you measure this DC voltage here, v out, right? Then you can get some estimate of temperature. Is that okay? Straightforward, right? Yes. All right. So um, so alpha s. Uh, if you take a typical PTC. Let's take some examples here. Uh, it is 300 ppm per kelvin. Okay, what this means is that if the temperature goes up by one degree C or one kelvin, then uh, the resistance goes up by that much ppm. Right? Okay. Now, um, if you see, I think in the homework assignment you guys have done similar thing and uh, if you do the right approximations what you get is the change in the output voltage for a change in the temperature will be approximately alpha b uh, sorry, alpha s minus alpha b by 2 which is round up there is a non-linearity here but I am assuming uh, that is linearized right and that can be done uh, yeah, and that turns out to be so. Let me do the full math. Maybe then it kind of clear clarifies this, right? Yeah. So my V out will be R S by R S plus R B times one volt, right? So this will be. So if you substitute these R zeros will cancel, right? So you get one plus delta T times alpha S divided by one plus alpha S plus alpha B, right? Also, oh, this will be two plus this plus delta T. Okay. I am just substituting this formula. So, this I am calling it as delta T, right? I am just substituting that here for Rs and Rb. R zeros will cancel and you get this. Okay? Is that okay? Good. So, um, now one approximation I make here is take out half. So, you get 1 plus alpha S delta T divided by 1 mark plus alpha s plus alpha b by 2 times delta t okay just the 2 is taken out and i can get rid of i can assume that this is much smaller than 1 okay is that okay so this is 0 0.001 approximately and uh, times delta t which is what 
5 degrees, 2 degrees, something like that, right. So, this can be round, rounded out, ok, and this is much smaller than 1. So, you can take this up and call it 1 minus alpha 1, yes, plus alpha b by 2 times delta t, right. And again, um, what you will notice is that uh, this is v out. So, what will happen is uh, this will be half, uh, keep the half the same, 1 this times this will be there, right, and this 1 times that, right. So, that will be basically alpha s minus alpha b t, ok, and this times that I ignore, ok. So, therefore, my d v out by d delta t will be alpha s minus t, ok. So, this is basically the sensitivity, right, which for our, our, our example here is approximately 2300 minus 300 by 2 ppm per k, which is 1000 ppm, right. That is how much the DC value will change for a change in temperature by 1 Kelvin or 1 degree, ok. Is that fine? This is basically finding the sensitivity. But that is not what we started us out with, right. What we want to know is how the noise um, we had 1 volt and we will assume some value for resistor, ok. Here is where my uh, assumptions come in. Uh, what value can we assume? Let us assume something like uh, 100 kilo ohm, ok. Let us just take that as an example 100 kilo ohm, this is also 100 kilo ohm, right, and you are measuring the output voltage, right, fine, yes, ok, good. Now, tell me what is the, um, we have to find out what is the output noise, right, because that is what we are interested in, right. Um, so, if you see, you can model each of these as a Volt, this is ground as far as noise is concerned, ok, and this will be some b n 1, where this will be r 1. Again, you have another resistor b n 2 square, this is r, or let me just call it r 1 and r 2 so that we can analyze this easily, right. So, what is the total uh, output noise? Is there any filtering happening here? No, right. There is no cap any capacitor or inductor, so there is no problem of filtering. So, we still measure uh, the output noise, um, which kind of extends to a very high frequency, ok. So, you help me with this. So, this is V out. So, what is the spot noise V out in terms of spot noise is V out? Spot noise essentially means that at one instant of time, there is some noise which is some v n, polarity does not matter, because in the end we will square it and the polarity goes away, right. So, what is this? It is r 2 by r 1 plus r 2 times v n 1 plus v n 2, right. This is spot noise, remember, yeah, times r 1 by r 1 plus R2, fine, ok. So, if all R's are the same, all the noise will be the same, right. So, this will be V out, will be, uh, now mind you, I think uh, here let us make a transition to the power spectral density, where we say it is, uh, let us also make the assumption that R1 is equal to R2. Right, it will be v n 1 squared by 4, right, because there is a 2 there, half that will become 4 when you square it, 
plus V and 2 squared by 4. Right? So, my output noise power spectral density will be V and when R1 is equal to R2, some V and squared divided by 2. Is that okay? Yes. So, now we said R approximately 100 kilo ohm, right at 25 degree C. Hmm? Now, what is output noise square will be 4 k t r by 2. Yes. And that will be something like 2 k b t r. What is the unit of this? Whole square per hertz. Right. Okay. So, now just to kind of, you know, make this a little more interesting. Now, let us say you take this sensor, whatever you have made, right, and you connect it to an oscilloscope with a bandwidth of, let us say, what is the typical bandwidth of an oscilloscope? 1 megahertz, 2, you also get 20 megahertz and so on, right. Let us say 20 megahertz, okay, and you measure the voltage. Fine. Okay. So, what is the output noise total? Hmm? What is it? Integrated, but let us because this is a 20 megahertz oscilloscope, it can only measure voltage up to 20 megahertz. So, what is the output? into 20 megahertz, 2 kb t r into 20 megahertz, right, r is 100 kilo. So, what is this value? Can anybody just key it into the uh, Okay, I think I have it here. Uh, let us just add some numbers. So, this we said is uh, 100 kilo ohms. And this thing is 20 megahertz. And this is a value 2, right? Yes. And this turns out to be about 122 microvolts. Hmm? 122 microvolts. So, this is 122 microvolts squared, right. So, the sigma of the noise is 122 microvolts. So, what is the error in temperature? Basically, sigma of noise divided by sensitivity, right. This is volts per Kelvin, okay. And this is what we said it is 1 uh, 0.122 millivolt divided by if you look at this value here, right, it was for a 1 volt supply. What is this? What is the value at 25 degrees Celsius at the output for a 1 volt supply? What is the value here when this is 1 volt and these store 100 kilo ohms? Right? The DC value is 0.5 volts. Correct? Now, this 0.5 volts changes by 100 ppm per Kelvin, right? So, how many volts per Kelvin? Huh? 1 millivolt? Huh? 1 millivolt? 0.5 millivolt per Kelvin, right? Is that okay? 
because 0 0.5 changes by 1000 ppm okay so now um, when you divide this by 0 0.5 volt per kelvin right huh or millivolts what will be the error in temperature error in measurement of temperature or the standard deviation just twice this value right approximately 0 0.24 kel um, here yeah so this is the change that we are talking about because kelvin and degrees map the same way you can also call this this is the error that you measure um, either in kelvin or degree c right so what this means is that if you design this uh, temperature sensor and simply hook it up to a an oscilloscope which has a 20 megahertz bandwidth right then whatever temperature it is reading has an error of about 0.2 degrees that makes sense right if it gives you a value of uh, 0.5 you cannot simply conclude that it is 25 degrees today right because there is an error around it right it could be 25 point there is a sigma around it so there is a distribution so if you take each of those values right it is noisy is that fine okay so therefore choosing the right bandwidth for that application is important right this is an exaggerated example right you will not be measuring temperature with the real uh, you know front end which has a bandwidth of 20 megahertz right that's not practically the case but be careful about what signals you are trying to measure and important thing is what bandwidth we are trying to measure it with uh, that bandwidth is dependent upon the bandwidth of the signal you are trying to measure right if the temperature changes at the time constant of let's say one second then we don't usually hook it up to a 1 kilohertz adc right and then simply take the digital value that it puts out and say that's the temperature okay we have to choose that correct is that fine yes any questions so far about this so there is uh, you know i think today's class was basically to kind of review some of the material we covered last time and give one or two examples so the next uh, topic um, that we can start now is the topic on uh, two port noise modeling so um, a two port circuit right is basically any circuit which can be modeled as follows with an input port and an output port right. this is port 1 this is port 2 here is the input port and here is the output port ok and a port is always two terminals ok so there is a voltage that you can define across the port right and there is uh, I am sure you know that you cannot have a voltage without a reference to something else right it's usually with respect to ground or some other port right that's why you need uh, two terminals right and the voltage across the terminal and the current through the port right so whatever current you send here you have to withdraw it here right that's the port definition hmm? now um, any examples of two ports in circuits examples of two ports and circuits an amplifier right where you have some uh, input and it gets amplified to an output okay anything else transconductors right ok 
trans impedance amplifiers this is voltage amplifiers trans impedance amplifiers low noise amplifiers okay and so on right so these are you know, common two ports that you see in most circuit design hmm? and uh, now obviously we looked at a lot of uh, models in the previous uh, sections where all the circuit elements inside an amplifier or it could be a lna or what not can be modeled as you know noisy elements right with certain current and um, current noise or voltage noise right now all of these are noise that is generated from all the elements in the circuit inside that two port network correct so if you want to analyze um, look at it as a black box right and to say that i am not bothered about how those noises are generated inside the two port network but all i want to know is how this whole amplifier or this whole lnl behaves as far as my two ports that i am interested are concerned right so that's when you uh, kind of refer it to the input right refer all the noises all independent noise sources independent noise to the Input. Is that okay? Right. So this is basically taking a black box approach, and to say that I will, ha I have it like what? I have a two circuit, two ways, uh, two uh, black boxes. One black box is noisy with many circuit elements, right? And this. i will say that i don't care what is generating the noise inside but i will only look at it as a a, a noiseless network and then take out all the noise and club it into some noise at the input or it could be at the output okay you can club it either way doesn't matter but uh, noise this Two ports, right? I have this. So these two have to be the same. Okay? Can it be the same without anything added? No, right? How can a noisy circuit just be a noisy circuit or vice versa? So one way to do this is to say that I will represent this as a, a voltage source and a current source. as follows okay and then club it up all the noise that is generated inside a two port network i'll club it up into these two noise sources right i have to find values for that but that's a different problem right so why is it important exactly so if you have two amplifiers right you want to know which amplifier generates more noise or which performs better than the which of those two or three ones perform uh, better right and if you kind of say that okay this transistor inside is burning so much current and there is another resistor there and all of that internal components then it's not really meaning much right in the end for what i care are they performing differently or the same okay and that can be done by saying that i'll club all the noise sources inside this two port network into a voltage source and a current source right and then uh, you know just represent it as follows okay now what is the catch here the catch is that whatever noise you measure at the output in both the cases should be the same right only then these two are equivalent correct okay the first thing is output noise in both cases should be the same
okay is that fine now the next thing is that um, why do we split it up into a current and voltage one what do you mean i see your point so what you are saying is there is some dependence on the previous loading okay so one way to look at it is the following let's say uh, if there was just a short circuit here right to measure some noise at the output right because the circuit inside is generating some noise correct if you also open it you also measure some noise okay because it doesn't matter let's say if this was just a resistor inside right doesn't really matter uh, if this i'll i'll make sure that somehow i'll short it inside and give you this okay it doesn't mean much this is my two port network right you are measuring noise independent of what you are doing at the input right now if i just say that i'll take this block right and just measure it and call it a two port network by just modeling it as a voltage source okay this is vn this is output right i'm just taking this as an example right there is a this is my two port network input i just leave it short output i just uh, have a resistor let's say take, take that as an example now do i uh, are these two the same or rather my question is is this do you measure noise here so this is noise less right which is basically a noise less resistor inside and this is short this is noiseless are these two the same yes no right no because why now i think i screwed it up a bit actually so in in this case the gain is not defined sorry um Yes, so I think I screwed this up. This is a bad example. Let's take another. Uh, okay, let's take this example here, where I have a voltage source, and this is a resistor, right? And this voltage source has A times V one, and this is V one, right? and the resistor is only the one that is generating noise okay is this fine this is my example uh, is there noise measured at the output hmm? sorry so this really doesn't make much sense unless you have a source resistance right a resistance connected here I think I'm confusing myself and confusing all of you. Okay, um, is that? I'll come up with a better example in the next class. Sorry about that. Uh, one way to look at it, I mean, is what you 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 were saying is that let's say I keep this. Let me copy this again. Here. So this is a noiseless. Network, and I modeled its noise as a voltage noise and a current noise. Is that fine? Right. And now, if I keep it open, the input open, right, like this, what is connected now? what happens to the noise at the output which element contributes to the noise at the output the current source right so all of this current is flowing into this port right and based on the input impedance it generates a voltage and consequently there has to be a relation between the input and output right if it that doesn't exist i think the example i was giving you is wrong but if that doesn't exist it doesn't work but the output noise will be contributed by the current 
right. Now, on the contrary, if I short this here, so this noise current will now flow here, right, and this voltage will contribute to the output noise, right. So, when you want to find uh, V n and I n, so V n is found by shorting the input or short input right and find I n by by opening the inputs. ok. So, the idea here is the following let us say you have a noisy two port network you short the input here ok. Now, find the output noise right. Now, you then assume the circuit is noiseless right and then apply a V n squared right because that is what is now contributing to the output right and then measure the output noise with respect to V n squared. So, we will take an example right and it becomes clear uh, when we do that right. And uh, on the contrary, you keep it open and measure the output, and then um, you have only i n squared and measure the output and compare the two, right? That is how you club these two together. Um, is that okay? So, uh, one thing is um, I mean, we have run out of time today, uh, but one thing to uh, find out is why do we refer this to the input? Yeah. Yes, that is a good point. So, um, so this will make why uh, we refer it to the input is it makes it gain independent ok. What I mean by that is the following. Let us say you have an input referred noise of 1 micro volt and a gain of 10 and a different amplifier with a gain of 100 and 1 micro volt here right ok. So, what is the output noise here times 10 right this will be 10 micro volts this will be 100 micro volt, right ok. And if you have a signal of 1 milli volt what is the signal here 10 milli volt what is the signal here 100 milli volt. So, what is the SNR here? same in both cases right. So, if you just look at the output noise of this amplifier, hmm, it might look that this amplifier is worse than this correct, but when you look at the signal to noise ratio in both cases it is the same right. Therefore, you have to desensitize it with the gain of the amplifier right, does it make sense? Correct. So, just looking at the output and saying one amplifier is bad or performs worse than the other does not make sense because what really matters is how it is affecting the signal as well as the noise right. So, therefore, if you refer it back to the input you desensitize it with the gain of that amplifier right. So, as far as the signal is concerned in both cases right the noise that is the amplifier is adding to the signal is the same right that is what really matters is that fine. Yes, so another I mean I am running out of time here, but another quick thing let us say you measure 100 uh, micro volt noise here and you realize that whatever like this is an amplifier with so many stages etcetera right. So, if you measure 100 micro volts and you want to reduce noise right, so what you do is take a divider right, 
what is the noise here? 50 microvolt. So this is better, right? Better? Why? Ah, let's say resistors are cooled and all that. They are not contributing any noise. Signal is also attenuated, right? So this is something to keep in mind. Just you know, reducing the you measure noise and say I will attenuate noise. You are probably also attenuating signal, right? So this is a big no no, right? Uh, no, never do this. Warning. This is this is better. Okay. So just attenuating the signal, sorry, the noise also could affect the signal. That is important to keep in mind, right? Never to be simply scaling the noise really does not work, ok. Is that fine? Ok, alright. So, I think uh, this is a big no. Um, with that, I think today we will end and maybe tomorrow onwards, uh, no, sorry on Friday, we will take up one example and then uh, start with our next topics. Okay. Mm -hmm.